Hi everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine, plant-based fitness nutrition. Before we get started, let me get into the FDA requirements. This video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. You can join us on Facebook at Clean Machine Fit every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern or watch any of the vi our videos later on YouTube at Clean Machine Online. <clears throat> okay, so this is probably the most important video I've ever done. Uh, it has the potential to impact people's lives like no other video I have done to date. It's, it's a little bit somber, but it should be interpreted as empowering because once you know the truth, you can do something about it. It's not knowing the truth that can get you in trouble. And the truth is, is this truth should have been out in the mainstream public and been taught in schools and been told to you by your doctors and the medical community and the insurance companies decades ago. Why this information is not common knowledge is killing people. And that's why I share this information. Okay, so what has this got to do with plant-based fitness nutrition? Well, if you're not alive, you can't be plant-based and you can't be fit. So nutrition would, doesn't even matter. So we, we have to start with the basics. Uh, what is our proper diet for health, fitness, and nutrition. Are we, as humans, herbivores, carnivores, or omnivores? And that's a big, hotly debated question. Um, but the research has shown quite clearly, and, and I can't emphasize how clear this research is. It, this should make it um, indisputable, undebatable. It should be accepted as common knowledge and fact scientific, biological, physiological fact. Once you hear this information and see the research, I think if you have an open mind at all and willing to receive this information, you will be convinced that this is, this is something that you should apply to your life and base your nutritional decisions on. Okay. Let's rebound. Since this is part two of part one, if any of you have seen part one, you might want to fast forward a little bit. I'm just going to recap part one a little bit for those who haven't seen part one. So are humans uh, herbivores? The answer is yes, um, without a doubt, we're herbivores. And I'll explain why. Uh, so I call this the omnivore, omnivore fallacy. So many humans classify themselves as omnivores in order to justify eating animal flesh, meat, poultry, pork, eggs, and dairy. Okay, but there are really only two nutritional requirements for animals. So one, the animal has to eat plants in order to survive to get its nutritional requirements that are only found in plants, or the animal has to eat other animals. These are carnivores. There is zero requirement for any animal to eat both, none. So omnivore is really not a thing. It's something that humans made up to put themselves in a classification to make them feel good about you know, being in the middle. So all animals can be put in those two different categories. They either have to eat plants in order to survive and thrive and be healthy, live healthy, or they can eat animal, have to eat animal products. And there's some really clear reasons. I'm not going to go into all of them. I'm just going to cover one because it makes it so abundantly clear that this is true. Okay. So calling ourselves an omnivore is like calling ourselves a chemical omnivore just because we choose to eat foods with chemicals in it. No, that's not how it works. Chemicals are not a requirement in our diet and animals are not a requirement in our diet. There is not one single nutrient that our body requires that we can only get from animals. None. 
zero. There is not a single nutrient that we require that we can't get from plants, bacteria, or the sun. Bacteria is where B12 come. Bacteria also produce the K2, the vitamin K2 in our guts that we need if we're eating a healthy plant-based diet. So there is no nutritional requirement for any human being to eat any animal product ever. None. No nutritional requirement. That is fact. You can Google that all day long and it will be true no matter what you read. Um, okay. So what about animal products? How come if we can eat animal products? Well, I posted a study that was pretty, let's just say, excuse the term, damning. Let's go ahead and pull that study up on the screen. Because it's a study that really paints a pic clear picture, I'm going to go ahead and put it up here. So the first paper is uh, 20 questions on atherosclerosis. What is atherosclerosis? Sclerosis is scarring or damage to arteries. Okay. And this is the precursor to heart attacks, stroke, high blood pressure, kidney disease, a whole host of problems, including erectile dysfunction, uh, aneurysms, uh, gangrene. I mean, there's so many things that depend on our bloodstream being able to flow properly. And when that's blocked with atherosclerotic plaques, we get disease states. So this doctor, Dr. William C. Roberts, asked the question, is atherosclerosis a disease affecting all animals or only in certain animals? His answer, atherosclerosis affects only herbivores. Dogs, cats, tigers, remember dogs are omnivores, cats, tigers, and lions can be saturated with fat and cholesterol and atherosclerotic plaques do not develop. You cannot make a carnivore get atherosclerosis. <laughs> it's impossible. And, and he wrote another study. Here it is, this one too as well. Atherosclerosis, its cause and its prevention. And he goes on to say, atherosclerosis is easily produced in non-human herbivores, like monkeys and rabbits, by feeding them a high cholesterol diet, example, egg yolks, or a high saturated fat diet, example, animal fat. These studies initially were done by some Russian physiologists beginning a hundred years ago. So it's been in the research for a hundred years that we know when you feed saturated animal fat and cholesterol to an herbivore, they get atherosclerosis, <laughs> right? Well, but does it happen to all of them? Yes. He goes on to say, an atherosclerosis was not produced in a minority of the rabbits fed these diets. No, it was produced in 100% of the animals. Indeed, atherosclerosis is one of the easiest diseases to produce experimentally, but the experimental animal must be an herbivore. Now, two things in this. One, that only herbivores can get atherosclerosis. Omnivores and carnivores do not and cannot even get it if you force the stuff on them. It's impossible. So we're clearly not those because atherosclerosis is the number one disease killer of humans on this planet. Number one disease. Over 50% of Americans will die from atherosclerosis directly and indirectly with all the other disease related, uh, diseases that it's related to cause. It's probably up in the 60 to 70%. So clearly human beings fit into the herbivore category because you can't even give atherosclerosis to an omnivore or carnivore. It is impossible. It's not reproducible in the laboratory. And we've known this for over 100 years. Okay, the big part that people pointed out when I put this up in the study, they said, well, if it's produced in 100% of the animals, how come it's not produced in 100% of the humans? 
that is where I found a different study that it shows it is produced 100% in human beings as well. But before we get to that study, let me just point out that he goes on to say it's not possible to produce atherosclerosis in a carnivore with one exception you actually actually have to take out their thyroid so this is probably something in the omnivore carnivore that is produced by their thyroid gland that helps them prevent that uh, saturated fat and cholesterol from causing atherosclerosis so when you remove that thyroid gland from a tiger, a dog, or bear, then that starts to develop. We, we find this even in uh, birds of prey that are eating fish, fish filled with plastics. We know plastics disrupt thyroid glands. So when the birds of prey are eating these fish filled with plastics polluted by humans, then these birds of prey, which are predators, which are carnivores, type 1 carnivores, they start disrupting their thyroid. And now we're actually seeing, because of that, we're seeing cholesterol plaques and streaks, the beginnings of atherosclerosis in birds of prey, many birds of prey, the ones that are eating fish. They looked at other birds of prey, like owls that were eating mice, that weren't eating the ones that are full of plastics, the fish full of plastics, and they weren't getting that. So it's clear we're disrupting their thyroid, which he pointed out in this study, just by damaging the thyroid, we can do that. So this is the study that actually shows about 50% of all deaths in westernized society are caused by atherosclerosis. Okay, so let's get to the study. This study is heartbreaking. And, and what's heartbreaking at first about it is this date, 1999. Over 20 years ago, this came out showing the prevalence and extent of atherosclerosis in adolescents and young adults. Implications for prevention from the pathological determinants of atherosclerosis in youth. We're not talking atherosclerosis as a disease that you get when you're 50, 60, 70, 80 years of age. We're talking 15 years old and you have this disease state in you. This is heartbreaking. So let's look at the study results. A total of 2,876 study subjects between the ages of 15 and 34 years old, black, white, men, women, who died of external causes and went, underwent an autopsy. Okay, obviously you can't take the arteries out of a living person. So these are people that were killed by homicide, by suicide, by car accidents, by other things, falling, things like this. So accidental deaths, they opened them up, they looked at their arteries, and what they found was horrific. The conclusions of this study, and it goes much deeper once you see the chart, the conclusions of the study that atherosclerosis begins in youth. Fatty streaks and clinically significant raised lesions these are swelling of the arteries. These are bulging of the arteries where there are lesions, as if somebody's cutting up the inside of your arteries and it's swelling. These lesions increase rapidly in prevalence and extent during the 15 to 34 year old age span. Primary prevention of atherosclerosis as contrasted with primary prevention of clinically manifested, that's full-blown atherosclerotic disease, must begin in childhood. What? 
Why is this happening in childhood? Because we are feeding them a standard American diet full of animal products, full of saturated fat and cholesterol. And we're seeing the beginnings of atherosclerosis, the number one killer of Americans in America. We're seeing this at the age of nine, nine years of age, a child already has the number one disease killer of the in the United States. They are starting to die at age nine. There is no reason for this. This does not have to happen. This makes me so angry that the medical community, that our doctors, our scientific community, our schools and education systems are not teaching people this. This is outrageous that we are feeding our children the number one cause of death in the United States. And they are already beginning to see those signs of early death at nine to 15 years of age. Your child is dying because of the food they're putting in their mouth. And it's already begun by the age of nine to 15. You don't believe me? Let's, let's go ahead and pull up. <laughs> Here it is. Here's the facts. 100% of the people studied, almost 3,000 people studied, 100%, all of them from the age of 15 to 34 had atherosclerosis, 100%. Just like the doctor said, 100% of herbivores get atherosclerosis, 100% of humans get atherosclerosis. We are herbivores. Our body is doing exactly what the science says, that 100% of herbivores get atherosclerosis from consuming cholesterol and saturated animal fat. Cholesterol in significant quantities only comes from animal products. Eggs, dairy, fish. Yes, fish has cholesterol and all other animal products. All animal flesh has cholesterol. Plants do not have any significant amounts of cholesterol in them. Let me go ahead and blow this up so that you can see it even closer. That is 100% have abdominal aorta lesions. And over here, you can see 100% of 15-year-olds have thoracic aorta lesions. This is the beginnings of atherosclerosis. The lesions turn to scars, turn to plaques, turn to calcified plaques, and either erupt and cause strokes in the brain or heart attacks in the heart, erectile dysfunction in the genitalia, gangrene in the extremities, leading to loss of limbs, hands, hands, legs, feet. Here it is. Here is the stages. And you can see down here at the stage, that's 10 years of age. This is chronological age here. 10 years of age, 15 years, you already have fatty streaks in your arteries. 15. You're beginning to die at 15 years of age. A new study from the Netherlands just showed that human beings should be able to live to 114 for men and 115 for women. Here we are at 15 years of age, 100 years before our natural lifespan should end. And we're already starting a disease state simply because we're putting this cholesterol and saturated fat from animals into our bloodstream. This is the cause. This is the result. By the age of 30, already you forming plaques. By the age of 40, you already have blockages, hardened calcified plaques that could break off and cause strokes, could cause aneurysms, can cause heart attacks. At 40, we're not even halfway done with our lives, our natural lives yet. And we're killing ourselves just by consuming something that never belongs in the human body. Why is our educational system not teaching this? 
Why are our doctors not talking about this? Why is this not public knowledge? The care of the human being, our ability to live a disease-free life with full capacity to the age of at least 100 should be the norm. Not 100% of the people studied having the number one killer, disease killer in the world. That should not be happening. It's because no one is telling the truth about what happens to your body when you put this in there. And the science is clear. We know these stages of, of, of atherosclerosis. We know the timeline. By the age of 40, you have full-blown atherosclerosis in your body. The average person in America eating a standard American diet of animal products containing saturated fat and cholesterol, cholesterol only found in significant quantities in animal products. It is the animal products causing this, and we know how fast it causes it. Starting at nine years of age, you already have the beginnings of this disease, and by 40, you're ready for a heart attack or stroke or some other disease function. Hypertension, high blood pressure, gangrene, aneurysms, just all over the place, varicose veins, kidney disease. Kidney disease, when you strangle the artery like that, when you squeeze the artery, what happens if you take a hose and you squeeze the hose? What happens? The water comes out a lot faster because the pressure is higher. You've made the opening smaller, so the water shoots through at a faster rate. Will the arteries that feed the kidneys, because the kidneys need a lot of blood, they strain out the blood, just like the liver does. When those arteries get squeezed, they push a, a lot faster of that blood pressure into there, and then it wreaks havoc and damages the insides of the kidneys. This is kidney disease. These diseases don't happen to us. We are creating them. The drugs don't make them go away. The drugs don't make you stop eating what's causing these diseases. Hypertension, high blood pressure, kidney disease. It's all there. The research is there. The science is there. The facts are there. We're clearly herbivores and by choosing not to consume the food that actually prevents cancer, that heals our body, that feeds our microbiome. These are plants. Plants grab that sunshine, that sunlight, and they give us all the nutrients they want. They pull the nutrients and the minerals out of the soil. They pull the oxygen and create carbohydrates. They create the essential amino acids. Animals don't create essential amino acids. There is nothing. Animals are consumers of nutrition. Plants are producers of nutrition. If you look at the trophic scale, they're at the very bottom, plants are, because they provide all the nutrients for all of the animals above them. If you're a carnivore, you have to eat another animal that ate plants somewhere along the line, because plants make all the nutrients. They make all of the essential fatty acids. They make all of the essential amino acids. So this is what, the natural cycle is. And if we don't listen to this, listen to this research, then we are going to go down this path of eating the animal products, getting the disease state starting at nine years old. By the time you're 15, you're already forming the lesions that turn into plaques by 30. And by 40, you're ripe and ready for a heart attack or a stroke. Do you want that for you? Do you want that for your family? Do you, want, do you want those who love you and care about you to watch you suffer through these disease states? It, and it's so simple. This is, this is not a warning. This is an empowerment. Now that you have this knowledge, you can do something about it. This should be extremely empowering. When I share this um, information, people get so defensive and I'm like, you're defending having this disease, cancer, heart attack, stroke, diabetes. You're defending that? Are you kidding me? I'm trying to help you. I'm not saying I'm right, you're wrong. We got to get past this right, wrong, polarized society that we've created 
that you're right and my diet's right and your diet's wrong. Stop. That's ego. That's BS. And it's killing you. I'm very passionate about this, as you can see. It's because I'm 60 years of age. I made it to 60. My mother, my brother, my father didn't make it to this age. I have a loving wife. I have a good life. I'm doing what I, I love, sharing information, helping people get healthy and fit. I'm in the best shape of my life at 60. And my family members aren't here to share it with me. I can't do anything about that. They're gone. What I can do is make videos like this in hopes that some of you don't have to experience what I've been through. It's my pay it forward. I hope you share this video. Uh, I hope you can help me get the word out. Suffering sucks. I don't want anybody to suffer. It's why I do what I do. Because I don't want to see others suffer. And too many people are going to. Too many people are living with a time bomb in their chest that is just waiting to go off. Through a plant-based diet and proper exercise, good air, loving relationships, good sleep. If we can just do these fundamental things, life can be so enjoyable and rewarding. Yeah, there's always struggles, but we can manage them so much better. I do this, you know, it's funny when people say, oh, you, you do this to, to make money. Yeah, we all have to make money. I wish I didn't have to. I wish I was like on Star Trek and we were beyond money already and I could just do what I love because I love doing it. I do this because I suffered a lot and, and now I'm really enjoying life. And that's what I would want for anybody. You know, when you find something in your life that you really enjoy and makes you really happy, don't you wanna naturally share that with other people? I do. And I hope, I hope there's people, especially guys, God, there's so many guys out there that will fight me tooth and nail. Mmm, bacon. Just be idiotic. And it's so sad because they're going to end up with cancer and heart attacks, strokes, even worse, debilitating diseases. Will they suffer? <laughs> It's like the study on eggs, 81% increase in risk of prostate. And they're like, oh, well, I'll just get my prostate removed and then I won't have cancer. Great. Now, 75, up to 75% of those who get their prostate removed are impotent for the rest of their lives. How masculine is that? Hmm? To be impotent for the rest of your life. Is that really what you want? Are eggs really that important to you to consume them? Seriously? That's the trade-off you're okay with? Stop defending stuff that's hurting your own self. That's just beyond. Let's get beyond this ego. Let's get beyond this you're right, I'm wrong crap. And let's look at the science. Don't, you don't have to suffer. Thank you for listening. And thank you for sharing ahead of time for all of those you do. This information can save people's lives. I hope you share this with people who you love, <laughs> even those who you don't, because they'll thank you for that. As always, I'll be back again with more of the research that really shows not just the bad, but how we can avoid the bad, how we can avoid some of the suffering in our lives.
Thank you for watching. I'll be back again. We've got some exciting new studies coming up that I can't wait to talk to you about just how important exercise for us in our lives and how little of it can make such a huge impact. So never say, hey, I can't do it all the time, therefore I don't. Don't ever do that. Every single bit of exercise, every good meal you make matters. Thanks for watching. Please share, give it a thumbs up. Please leave comments if you can, questions if you need. I'll be sure to answer them. We'll see you again next week.